Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa was involved with two trade developments this week that could have long-term implications. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the implications. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Firstly, South Africa made the much-anticipated concession on US chicken imports. Yes, this has been a long-running saga <coughs> and uh, at one stage it looked like it was enough to derail our continued participation in the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act which was first introduced for President Bill Clinton quite a few years back and has really given us pre uh, preferential market access into the giant US economy. So it was quite a big issue. And it's been a, a toing and froing that's been going on for a number of months with the two industry associations from South Africa and from the US trying to come so to some sort of agreement. At the heart of this is that we've had a long running anti-dumping duty against US uh, uh, bone-in chicken. Um, so th we've, uh, have these duties have been in place for a number of years and it's really prevented U.S. producers from entering the South African market. So when the AGOA came up for renewal, it expires at the end of uh, September this year, a number of congressmen raised it as a key concern and they were saying unless there's some progress on that, they're going to see it as a, 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 for difficult for them to uh, incorporate South Africa as a beneficiary under what is really a unilateral trade preference because um, the U.S. Ex doesn't extend this uh, to other countries outside of Africa. In fact, it doesn't extend it to all of Africa. You have to qualify to be a, an AGOA recipient, and South Africa has been right from the, the get-go. So we didn't want to lose that. <coughs> and what we saw uh, in the last week is the two industry associations agreeing to a quota of about 65,000 tonnes a year, um, which was, I think, a hard-fought battle. I think the Americans probably wanted more. They probably wanted to get rid of the anti-dumping duty ent entirely, which we haven't done. It remains intact, so anything above that quota will still be subject to those dumping duties, which are prohibitive. Um, <coughs> and then from the South African industry side, which has already been battling from imports from a number of other fronts, this was a major concession. And one that, you know, it r because it's a, a non-reciprocal trade agreement, one that they felt you know, they were taking, uh, taking the hit for the whole of the South African economy in the sense that they had this dumping duty legitimately in place and felt that they should be able to sustain it. So it was a major concession from the poultry industry. And I think it's been coupled very much with uh, a promise of further uh, support from the South African government under the Agriculture Policy Development Program to try and sort of see the industry through. But both uh, Trade and Industry Minister Davies and the industry have said that this is not go is going to have an impact beyond just placing displacing imports from other countries such as Brazil. It's going to also have an impact on the local producers, and it could well have a jobs impact. And we've seen some numbers bandied about, but we're going to have to see as uh, as this um, uh, uh, quota comes into place whether those are the sort of job losses and economic impacts that actually materialise. What are the potential implications of this <coughs> on South Africa's continued participation in AGOA? Well, I think it's not over yet for South Africa. The Senate has passed the uh, extension of AGOA bill, um, and that in that they've said that South Africa, as soon as that's passed and once it's signed into uh, to law again by the president, there should be th within 30 days a review of South Africa's, con South Africa's continued uh, beneficiary status mostly because of this poultry issue, but there are other issues that have been raised uh, from other industry sectors, including pork and beef. But also the, the U.S. is worried about some of the things that are happening uh, in South African uh, investment environment more generally. The security industry bill comes up uh, front and center, which limits foreign ownership in the security industry. So <coughs> it looks like South Africa, unless Congress changes the bill, which is possible, and just allows our South Africa continued uh, participation. It looks like there will be some sort of what they call out of cycle review. So there's, it looks like a guy will be sent, uh, extended for 10 more years. And within that, there'll be a review. Now, whether it will be 30 days after signing into law or not, I think we'll have to see and wait for the details when the, the, the legislation passes through both house, houses of Congress in the US. But basically, uh, we could be facing some sort of review of our continued participation as a beneficiary. And I think what the poultry deal does is um, basically consolidates, as the Trade and Industry Minister says, 
our continued participation because it, it shows that we are prepared to do some reciprocity and uh, that we see the AGOA benefits of, of uh, outweighing the costs of, uh, of what the, this uh, quota will lead to in the poultry sector and that we would like to continue with this AGOA access. So, but, but basically we aren't, it's not, we aren't there yet and we're going to have to see what, how the legislation pans out, but it should strengthen our hand. There's also been some progress on the Cape to Cairo free trade area. Yes, that's the legal agreement uh, governing what they call the trilateral free trade area, which involves the East African community, the Southern African development community, which we are a member of, as South Africa, and COMESA, where there's, off, there's quite a few member states that are both SADC and COMESA members have agreed to in 2011 to try and form this free trade area that spans uh, from Cape all the way to Cairo up the east coast of Africa. It involves 26 countries and it's a, it you know, sort of has a, f a fairly sizable market if, if we have this uh, free trade area. And that has been signed this week in Sham al-Sheikh in Egypt. This doesn't mean that we're now a free trade area or living in a free trade zone. There's still some way to go as I understand it. We've signed the legal agreement, but the actual uh, lowering or the phasing down of tariffs is still has to be agreed. And uh, the, the trade ministers have given themselves another 12 months to negotiate those phased down schedules. And uh, those negotiations, uh, offers need to be made to countries so, uh, f with that we don't currently have a, a, a preferential trade agreement with. So within SADC, we, we operate as South Africa as SACU, which is Botswana, Swaziland, Lesotho and Namibia. We don't need to make new offers to SADC uh, or the members that within SADC that might be part of these other two communities. But we do have to make to the rest of the East African community and as well as I understand it, Egypt. And apparently we have now give, delivered our offer to the East African community states and they will need to come back with a counter offer. And uh, the uh, Egy Egyptian offer is apparently going to be concluded quite soon. But uh, I think what the aspiration is to have a, a big free trade area across South and Eastern Africa. And then once that is concluded, soon thereafter to start looking at extending it across the continent to make the whole of Africa a continent-wide continent free trade area. But again, as I say, you know, these, there's a lot of support for regional integration. Um, but it's a lot, uh, you know, it's a, the devil's in the detail and we need to get, see that detail emerging over the next uh, 12 months. And thereafter, because uh, it's not just about tariffs in Africa, really our trade facilitating infrastructure and our red tape is also a major prohibition factor. So it's going to have to be coupled not just with the liberalization of the tariff regime, but an easing of the flow of trade at, at border posts lowering the red tape and then actually having um, infrastructure that doesn't just face outwards. At the moment we're really a pit to port type infrastructure environment because we've been a very much a mining dominated country, a uh, continent where uh, the infrastructure is developed so that we can take it out of the mine to the port and into the markets of Europe and Asia. We need to have regional integration in the form of infrastructure as well and until we do those three elements that free trade agreement won't really be able to realize as people want it to. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.